Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. In general, dealing with narcissists can be a very difficult proposition because, I mean, who wants to hang out with somebody that's constantly trying to figure out how to maintain control over you? They have such a selfish attitude toward themselves that whatever needs or feelings or interpretations you have are just summarily dismissed. They have this haughty attitude towards you. All of that is difficult enough. But then when you get to the point in a relationship with a narcissist where they've had enough of you, and they are now thinking, you have not really done what I want you to do. You've not given me the supply that I require or desire from you. It's payback time. Then when they get to that point, it can just be an awful experience. When narcissists have their sense of woundedness or their sense of disappointment or disillusionment, they can turn into a mean person and beyond, and it can be an incredibly difficult experience for you. Now, this is true both with the overt narcissist and the covert narcissist. Now, you, you kind of expect it from the overt narcissist because they can be so brash and so loud and out there. But it gets really disappointing when you realize that that person that didn't necessarily start out seeming terribly narcissistic, uh, the covert, they can come on with a vengeance and they can come on with a cruelty that, that catches you off guard and it's terribly, terribly painful. Now, let's take it a little bit further and say that there are some individuals who go into this payback narcissistic mode who are not just mean but they're mean and they actually derive a sense of pleasure from seeing you in pain. They actually feel stimulated when they see you writhing in agony. This is what we refer to as the sadistic pattern of narcissism. Uh, sadism is just uh, known for, uh, for a person creating the, uh, the pain, creating a woundedness in the other individual and, and not just being harsh, but, uh, but actually taking great delight in the, uh, the strain and the difficulty and the pain and the agony that they generate. It's like, oh, this, this is my, this is my, you know, way of proving how important I am. This is my way of illustrating that I'm the ultimate. Don't you forget it. It's, it's beyond pathetic when we see individuals willing to go into that space, but I strongly suspect that many of you have had experiences of that uh, effect. Uh, let me take a quick aside. There are some entertainment themes that we have in our world today that absolutely sicken me. I mean, when I say sicken, it's just, it, it just makes me feel awful. I mean, like these uh, fighting uh, shows that we have on pay-per-view or television and all where, yeah, it, it's just little, uh, uh, barely a step above the gladiators where they're just beating the, uh, the holy hell out of one another. And, and, you know, the only rules are you can't gouge each other in the eyes and you can't kick, kick each other in the groin and anything else is, is a fair game. And you have all these people just shouting and deriving pleasure from that. And it's just like, wow. It blows me away, or some of our movies and television shows that glorify the psychopaths, the killers. Uh, it's bad enough to have that on the entertainment scene, and I think it's gotten worse uh, in years past. But then when you take that same mentality and bring it down to the individual level, that's when it becomes pretty real. When we talk about people who have this sadistic, take pleasure, rah-rah kind of mentality towards inflicting pain, there are multiple indicators that we want to watch for. Now, uh, again, I mentioned they have the core ingredients of narcissism, these sadistic uh, narcissists do. But when we say that these individuals are entitled, they are very entitled. When we say that these individuals as narcissists have low empathy, we're talking 
very low uh, empathy. When we talk about narcissists having an underdeveloped conscience, with sadistic uh, narcissists, it's like it doesn't exist. The conscience doesn't. These individuals have a perverted, twisted ability to rationalize why they should do what they do. I mean, when you think about it, who in the world can justify treating someone in a disdainful, painful way and then gloating over it, uh, taking delight in watching that pain unfold? But that's what these individuals can do. They don't just lust for power. They don't yearn for power. They want ultimate power. They want ultimate dominance. They want your subjugation in the worst sort of way because that elevates them. And again, they smile as they see it unfolding. In addition, of course, you can see another of the indicators is these people can be terribly calloused and cold-blooded. Uh, they are unmoved. Uh, when you say, stop it, quit it, please leave me alone. It's like, nope, haven't gotten enough. Let's keep it going. They are major scoreboarders, they're uh, scorekeepers, and when they get to the point to where the score is looking like uh, you're uh, too close to winning over them, then they're going to come through and it's like, I'm going to pummel you until you go down to zero, uh, and it's their way of trying to elevate themselves at your expense. They have zero conception for compassion or love or basic dignity. They're in constant payback mode. Uh, everything is, uh, as, as far as they're concerned, it's a uh, tit for tat. You give me this, I give you that. And if you don't, it's going to be curtains for you. And then these sadistic individuals operate with a great deal of paranoia. Uh, that, that, in other words, they can't trust. I remember uh, speaking with one man who was one of the meanest people I've ever spoken to. And as I was talking with him, I, I don't even remember the context, but I used the word trust. And as soon as I said that word trust, I mean, his eyes lit up with this uh, emblazoned sense of meanness. And he started pointing his finger at me saying, there is nobody in this world to be trusted. There is nobody that uh, that you can ever confide in. And, and he just went on and, and talked about how life is awful and it's terrible. And he revealed to me what was laying behind the scenes. And it was not pretty at all. That's the way these people think. They have a paranoia. Uh, they have a, a, a very low ability for uh, for trust. And then, of course, we can see that they have lots of double standards. You exist to take care of me. I don't take care of you. You exist to fill me up, uh, but I, I'm not about to fill you with anything other than misery. So then it le this leads to the question, how does a person get to the point of being so low in the way that they engage with people that they can be sadistic and actually derive a great deal of gratification by someone else's writhing? Well, first, we're going to say these individuals had to have been exposed to their own persecution uh, in their developmental years. Somewhere, they received the message that this is a cold-blooded, cruel world. They had been harmed, 100% guarantee. When they get to this level, they are damaged goods, and now they're basically saying, I'm going to be the one now who gets to harm you. I win when I damage you worse than I was damaged. That's how they think. Many of them will say, nah, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yes, it was. It's part of their deep, deep history. Uh, likewise, we can say they get to this point because they have no uh, good or clean or lasting emotional connections. They see relationships, if we can even use that word with them, in terms of utility only. And when they engage with you in a relationship, Basically, what they're saying is, I want to have ownership over you, and I want to, I want to have the final word. And they don't mean it just in uh, in a modest kind of way. It's like, no, uh, I'm in your head, and, and you need to filter everything through me. And then when they go into this negativity, that's part of their sadism. Um, they have no guilt, no remorse. They've been exposed to shaming. Uh, they've been exposed to abuse, and so in their minds, the the way that you take care of that is. You become the one that gives it to the next person, and it's just an ongoing uh, progression for them. Being mean energizes them, and I, I honestly think that there can actually be a biological or inherent uh, predisposition that some of these individuals have. I mean, for example, you can have some individuals who are just biologically sweet and pleasant, and they just they started out that way, they continue that way, and it stands to reason that you can have the same in reverse. So... As you're moving forward with these individuals and you realize there's not just a meanness 
or cruelty, but these individuals actually take great delight in uh, creating that, uh, that cruelty and that meanness and, and watching you squirm. Understand you cannot assume whatsoever that this sadistic narcissist can reason with you. It, it, it's just simply not going to happen. They don't have any moral compass. They don't have any sense of ethics to draw upon. Uh, whenever you attempt to call them out to them, that just simply becomes a reason to argue. And so don't even go into that space. These individuals are not just resistant to change. They are highly resistant to change. Drop that illusion. Move away when you can and then do so with the least amount of provocation, the least amount of, of competitiveness because it's bad enough to be in the presence of a hornet's nest and when you're getting away from it, you don't want to swat it while you're trying to move away because they'll chase you down. Instead, make sure that you allow yourself to become known by appropriate people. Uh, there is There can be a certain accountability if, if possible with consequences and stipulations and boundaries in place but uh, allow certain safe people to remind you of your core dignity, which is the reverse of what they give you, and hopefully the brainwashing that you've been exposed to can become minimized. This is a tough subject, and it's bad enough to know that narcissists can operate with their own attitude of entitlement, and, and they honestly think that you're expendable. But when you get somebody that takes it across the line and they become sadistic in the way that they derive pleasure from your pain, that takes it to a whole different level of psychopathology. So simply put, let's understand, your pain is not a joke and it's not to be minimized. They'll do so, but you need to take a, a, a extra precaution when you realize this is what you're up against. Listen to what your pain is saying. Your pain is saying, I need to get rid of what, or get away from what's causing this. And uh, in any equation that involves you uh, trying to uh, maintain a sense of reasonableness with this sadistic narcissist, let's understand uh, if you go into that space and you try to reason with them, you're gonna lose every time. Therefore, I'm hoping that you can determine when I see that happening, I am completely removing myself from any competition with this person. It's a losing proposition. Now, this is kind of a difficult topic. Uh, if you've not already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. Gus and I will continue to bring more videos in your direction. I want you to be educated. Knowledge is power. And the more you're able to understand what you're dealing with, the more you can take the, uh, the necessary precautions so that you can move on towards what you do deserve, which is dignity, respect, and civility. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. Likewise, uh, there can be at times when you're up against something as difficult as this that you might think, I could use some therapy to help me sift this through and get a handle on you know, what's going on out there, but also how you're going to respond to it inwardly. I'm so pleased that we're uh, sponsored by the people at BetterHelp.com. It's an online therapy service. You've heard me talk about it uh, plenty of times before. If that's something that you could make use of, I would encourage you to go through the link that we have provided for you. There's a whole team of licensed professional therapists that can assist you. Likewise, I also have my uh, my therapeutic courses. It's like signing up for an online class, and I've done it specifically for uh, reasons that uh, that you can walk yourself through the change process. Uh, multiple videos and uh, written documents and guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about how to make good connection skills. The, uh, uh, this is me about establishing those boundaries. Uh, free to be, finding yourself despite the narcissist. We have my webinars. We have our uh, uh, Surviving Narcissism podcast. We have our website with many articles on there, my books, many resources. Okay, when you, when you see yourself engaging with somebody who has this strong sadistic uh, tendency, they actually take delight in seeing you find pain, then you're dealing with somebody who's off the charts, uh, not, not good for you. Uh, I'm hoping that you can take care of yourself, practice the self-care that's so necessary at a time like this. And in doing so, I know that it's possible for you to eventually get to that place where you're able to find the peace that you so deserve.